In this video, we'll learn the fundamentals of networking, going over the concepts that are most relevant to multiplayer game development. We have a community Discord server, so if you have any questions or just want to say hello, feel free to hop in using the link below. So the internet is more or less a network of networks containing billions of connected computing devices, ranging from PCs, laptops, and servers, to tablets, phones, smart fridges, and whatever else you can think of. Data travels through the internet in little chunks called packets. These packets travel to their destination through various communication links, and protocols are what control the sending and receiving of these messages across the network. You can think of the internet as a provider of two types of services to applications, connectionless and connection-oriented. These correspond to UDP and TCP respectively. TCP, the Transmission Control Protocol, is one of the most widely used protocols for data transfer between end systems. It revolves around the idea of a connection, and until either the client or server closes the connection, it'll stay open. When the connection is closed, both parties get notified about it. TCP is also reliable, meaning that applications don't have to worry about dropping packets. If a packet gets lost somewhere along the way, TCP will ensure that it gets resent so that all data gets transmitted successfully, or otherwise the connection will error out. It's also sequenced, which means that it guarantees that every message will arrive in the same order that it was sent in. And lastly, there's also built-in flow control and congestion control, so data transmission will be throttled depending on network congestion in order to make sure receivers aren't overwhelmed with data. All of these nice features do come at a performance cost though, as I'm sure you can guess, but I'll cut this short as I'm working on a separate video dedicated to covering TCP in depth. UDP, the user datagram protocol, is widely used for data transfer for real-time applications like fast-paced multiplayer games or voice over IP, where keeping the latency as low as possible is more important than reliability. UDP is better for applications requiring ultra-low latency as there is no need to wait for the receiver to acknowledge that they've received your data. You can just pump out data like a fire hose. With UDP, you can control whether your messages are sent reliably with a hard-stamped guarantee of delivery, or whether they should just be pumped out and forgotten. Anyways, with UDP, you at least have this option, assuming you implement all of this functionality yourself. But luckily for us, since we're using Mirror, other people have already done all the legwork. Anyways, both TCP and UDP are widely used, and each is great for certain use cases. For example, HTTP, the protocol running the World Wide Web, uses TCP under the hood. FTP, the file transfer protocol, is another widely used example, as well as SMTP, the simple mail transfer protocol, which is the protocol underpinning email. So you can see that anywhere we need reliability or where there's some really important data transfer going on, TCP is probably your best bet. If you've heard of DNS, the domain name system, which is used every time you type in a URL in your browser, that's actually built on UDP. Most teleconferencing or voice over IP systems also built on UDP. A good example of why this is, is when you're on a call, because when you're talking to someone, you want to enjoy a real-time and uninterrupted call without any delay. And if your audio wasn't sent the first time, it doesn't really matter because packet losses have a very minor impact on the output audio, and it usually goes unnoticed. In first-person shooter games, where movement is extremely fast-paced, the same principles apply since you want a fast, real-time, and uninterrupted experience. And if packets are dropped, again, it doesn't really matter for the overall gameplay experience. So networks are complex and composed of many pieces. However, a lot of smart people came together and decided to organize the internet into a stack of layers, where each layer provides a very specific set of services to the layer above it in the stack and uses the services provided by the layer below it. Basically, each layer can treat everything below it in the stack as a sort of black box, and this idea of abstracting away layers of detail is something you'll find all over computer science, not just in networking. So the very bottom layer of the internet protocol stack is the physical layer, and this is where the individual bits, the ones and zeros, are inserted on the wire, so to speak, 
where a wire just means any sort of communication channel or medium. Right above it is the link layer, which handles data transfer between nodes on a network segment across the physical layer. A good example of something that touches both the link layer and the physical layer of the stack is the Ethernet protocol, which I'm sure you've at least heard the name of before. Above the link layer is the network layer, and this handles the routing of packets from their source to their destination. This layer supports the transport layer, which provides end-to-end -end communication between processes. TCP and UDP are transport layer protocols, and I think you can start to see how each of these layers is starting to build up to give us, the developers, services that are high level and easier to work with. Uh, speaking of which, the final layer sitting on top of the transport layer is the application layer. And this is the very top of the stack that supports networked applications. Some of the most common examples here are HTTP, FTP, and SMTP, like I mentioned earlier. Now to better understand what's going on here and how the layers are connected, let's go through a quick example of how data may be transferred from a source to a destination. So at the source, we have an application that wants to send a message to the destination. At the sender, each layer on the protocol stack takes data from above, adds header information to create a new data unit, and then passes that new data unit to the layer below. So you can see our original message becomes a segment at the transport layer, then a datagram at the network layer, and then a frame at the link layer. It then gets sent over the physical layer to the receiver, where this process is reversed as we go back up the stack until our message reaches its destination. So when building distributed systems, there are a few architectural patterns that come up over and over again. The most common is the client-server model, and a typical network application that follows the client-server model has two pieces, the client and the server. The client wants to use some service provided by the server, and so it initiates contact. The server then provides the requested service to the client, and ideally it's always running and available for new requests. The fundamental building block for client-server systems is the socket. Sockets are created by application processes, and by the way, a process is just a program that's running on a machine. You can think of a socket as an interface into which you can both send and receive messages to and from another application process. Now, in order to receive a message, a process must have some way to identify it. Otherwise, how would you know which process you would want to send your message to? So we already know that a machine has a unique IP address, but that's not enough to identify the destination process that we want to send our data to. Because at any given time, there are many processes running on the same machine. So we need something more specific than just an IP address, and that's what the port number is for. To connect to a server and start sending in messages, we need both the IP address and the port number associated with the server process on that machine. For example, when you go to a website using your browser, the server you're connecting to is most likely using port 80 for HTTP or port 443 for HTTPS, but your browser automatically handles this for you. So to quickly differentiate, a TCP socket provides a reliable bi-directional communication channel between processes, while a UDP socket provides an unreliable bi-directional communication channel. Anyways, that's where I'll leave things for this video. In the next few videos, we'll look at TCP and UDP in more depth so that we can really understand where each is used in the context of multiplayer games. And we'll also take a look at the various TCP and UDP transports available in Mirror. With that, I hope you better understand some of the fundamentals of networking. This stuff will really pay dividends as you develop multiplayer games or any networked applications in general. And again, if you have any questions or want to join the community, come join our Discord server link below. Thanks for watching and see you next time.